talk about the 2018 Kerala floods and how me, uh, who was a college student back then, and some of my friends were able to start a website, which later on became the official website of the Kerala government during the floods, and how we were able to bring, uh, get help from all around the world uh, to contribute to this project. Thank you. So, uh, my name is Vishwas. I'm a product engineer at Kambal for the past six months and here in Bangalore itself. So, uh, it all started in the month of August 2018 uh, when a conference got cancelled. So, I was an IEEE volunteer back then. You all are familiar with IEEE, right? It's an engineer's organization. So, uh, I was a volunteer back then and a IEEE conference got cancelled. So, there was a WhatsApp group for these volunteers and delegates. So, we students were discussing what we can do as engineers uh, to help the flood affected. So, it was the starting stage of the flood. So, we were discussing what we could do during that stage. And as engineers, we decided to put our technical skills in use and decided to make a website. So I created a website in Django, uh, and it was pretty simple at that time. It just had a couple of forms, one for volunteer registration and another for request for resources and help. So it had very humble beginnings, and the stack was like, it was, it was a Django application uh, running a Unicorn server and uh, used Heroku because it was the fastest thing to do, and it was, Later on, people started sharing this website as like uh, a source for these re uh, requests coming in. When people got stranded in places, they got uh, some of their friends posted it in the website and shared links for the website, like a database for uh, all of those stuff. And celebrities and the Kerala government uh, officials started sharing this. And the site started getting publicity. And this was the first request that came in. It was for 10 liters of water from a place called Patanandita in Kerala. So at this point, uh, volunteer registration, uh, there were 10K volunteers registered. That 10K was an uh, important number because that was the number of free database rows that Heroku provides. So all the hobbies guys are laughing out there. Yeah, <laughs> that makes sense, right? OK. Uh, so we, uh, as at this point, the website has become the official website of the government, and we are bound to use the Kerala State IT Missions data center. But we couldn't move in because there was a lot of uh, uh, things to do. Uh, we can't do it in like a day or something. Because, for example, to get a port open, I had to write a form and send it to someone to get that port open. Okay, <laughs> email it. That was the literal thing to do. So we couldn't do it, so uh, a generous guy named Shyam, who later became part of our team, he gave us some AWS credits. Uh, we moved it to AWS, the database. Later, when Heroku was generous enough to give us a lot of credits, we <laughs> came back to Heroku itself. And at this point, uh, stuff began to uh, like uh, go to a critical situation, where people got, got uh, stranded in places, for like a week and uh, without food and water. And the team also started to get pressure because one of us saw this um, message in one of the requests. So I'll read it. Me, my newborn, my father, mother, uncle, and aunt are trapped in our house. The ground floor if is flooded. We can't escape via road. Our road is near the, our house is near the Pamba River. Water, is, water level is increasing dangerously. Please, someone help us. This was the point uh, where our team members realized the intensity of things and how the code that we wrote directly affected uh, the people in the ground. And because uh, messages like this and the GPS coordinates coming from this were used to rescue people stranded in places. So next morning, someone was spreading a WhatsApp message like this, where Kerala Rescue is handling tons of requests and they need help from open source contributors. Because that is very true. There were uh, a lot of requirements to be implemented and we needed help, which we eventually got. So, we, uh, people from different parts of the world, importantly the diaspora uh, of Kerala and India and uh, People from like Europeans and people from the USA, I don't even know how they found out about the, pro about the project, but they came into our Slack, they started 
uh, raising issues, and people started picking up those issues. Uh, like two, three people were solving, uh, creating PRs for one issue, and it was a total mess, total chaos. But it was beautiful. It was a great experience as a software engineer. So <laughs> at this point, only some, uh, a couple of people, including me, uh, knew about the application completely. So code review was a very important thing. And we had to do it thoroughly because we can't afford to make this website crash, right? Because everything was real time. Rescues were happening real time. People were on the ground using this information uh, on their mob uh, mobiles. And people were calling me uh, to update these things. And there was a lot of things going on. So we had some of the technical challenges, but uh, it's not much of a challenge thinking back as a, uh, even as a six month experience developer. There were trivial things, so I'll uh, tell about some of them. Because um, we had a GPS accuracy uh, form where people could request for resources and help. Where we could get the uh, GPS location from their mobile phones, but the main problem was that uh, you might have noticed uh, the GPS won't log sometimes, right? The accuracy will be very low. And we can't do anything with low accuracy, accuracy uh, location. So that was a main problem. And database queries, we actually had open APIs in the beginning without any restrictions because we wanted people to use this information to uh, do their own anal anal analytics and uh, do their own rescue things. So, and there were new requirements for CAMs because CAMs started uh, after the rescue phase. And the next one is relief. So CAMs were started and uh, the government uh, needed a lot of uh, administrative dashboard related stuff in CAMs. They wanted to know what was happening in each district. So the IT m mission of Kerala government, they wanted to, uh, they wanted stuff like that. So, and uh, an example, a problem in Django would be that when uh, in a drop down list, when the number of items in a list is very high, in, uh, it increased very high, uh, the application would take tremendous amount of time to pass that. So some of the Django developers are smiling back there. So they know. Uh, so stuff like this, I had to make that asynchronous. These were some of the example technical challenges that I have. And uh, they had trivial solutions like databases need indices, and uh, we need uh, content, uh, CDNs for static contents, and we need to, uh, we had to stop the open APIs because uh, at some point, it was like an attack on the website where people were abusing the web, uh, APIs, and uh, there were a lot of duplicate data because data started come, uh, people from different places uh, request for the same help, same person, uh, like uh, if someone is trapped in somewhere, your multiple friends would uh, send in a request, right? So to do stuff like that, we had to do some uh, deduping, de deduplication, and the scale of care was in a span of uh, one and a half months and two months. We had like 50k requests in total, 5,500 government camps, all operated by government, uh, like POCs district level administrators, all thanks to uh, IT mission of Kerala. And there were a lot more private camps. All data were collected and updated regularly. And there were 3.5 lakh inmate data, all recorded in these camps. And 55K volunteers registered in total. And uh, for example, in my home district of Palakkad, uh, people, the district administration gathered all the uh, electrician information from these volunteers because we could uh, apply for uh, specific areas of volunteering. And they gather all the all these volunteers and they send them to repair the flood affected homes. Stuff like that was going on. And for me, uh, as a third year computer science student, that was a very unexpected experience to work with a lot of people coming in from uh, different time zones. So when I went to sleep like at 3 a.m., someone from the US would come in and <laughs> continue the work that we were doing. So uh, these were people with a lot of experience than me, a lot of knowledge than me, but to, uh, to be able to manage a core team of these people it was a really great experience, but really unfortunate experience to do it in such a uh, uh, situation. And we had about 
3,000 people in the, uh, currently, but at that stage, 2,000 plus people were on our Slack, and 100 people's uh, PRs were, got accepted into our GitHub. So, like 400 PRs in a month, you can assume uh, the scale of this stuff. And that was the story of uh, Kerala Rescue. And this was something written over a ceiling when people got evacuated over a helicopter. Uh, it was a, a way of saying gratitude. Uh, so yeah, thank you. I, I think from the Malayali's point, uh, I mean, I'm also Malayali, and this is a very emotional event for entire Malayalis. We have a colleague here, by the way, uh, Joe. He actually was missing for three days during the Kerala floods. And we've used uh, the Kerala Rescue website, and like you know, we'd like to thank you for your support. <laughs> any questions? Yeah. Yeah. yeah anything? I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, uh, very very warm presentation, and uh, I know, uh, and uh, I, I think so we should all appreciate the Kerala administration how it actually opened up and accepted uh, those things. Uh, again, after that, uh, uh, many other states did have floods, and uh, you know uh, they do go through similar circumstances. So. Uh, were, were you able to pitch this um, there or were, did any of the community members come and gather this and try to create a similar thing for different states or something, such kind of thing has happened or I just wanted to know that. So uh, someone, a lot of people forked it and uh, someone in Assam was using it, uh, the, the copy, the fork. And uh, we generally, the core team of Kerala Rescue didn't actually pitch it to any district as such, but there were people using it uh, the folk of the website and uh, a new project called Rebuild Earth where a proper disaster management software is being built uh, so that's going on and it's a very slow process actually but it's still happening. Yes, yes, the same, same team, yeah. Uh, hi, uh, it's a very inspiring talk. Uh, thank you for what you did. Um, I have actually three part questions. So one is how did the core team get created? How did you come together? What was the process? Uh, secondly, uh, you mentioned people collaborated all across uh, the world, right? So how did that happen? Um, and also when uh, you say you work closely with the government, how did that uh, uh, work out? Because particularly, you know, it's challenging to work with the government in regular times. In, in times like this, how did that happen? And thirdly, were there any others who were doing kind of the same thing that you are doing, and was there any, um, you know, collaboration or something? You know, yeah. The important thing here that is that this was born out of IEEE, so we were in a particular position. We had a government relations chair in IEEE itself, so that was our way through to the government. So that made everything easy, like very easy to get to the government. And the team, uh, the development team, uh, like a couple of us were from IEEE, but later on, uh, people, regular contributors to our GitHub repository, we started communicating with them, and they became the team. It was all a, a dynamic process. So uh, there was no process to it, actually. But it happened like that, <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Also. Thank you.